Welcome everyone to this video demonstration of the 2N Helos IP Verso uh, touch display module. This is just a short video demonstrating everything that this module can do and how it can fit into several different setups. Here we see it in info panel mode. Um, 2N do sell a separate info panel module um, into which you can just insert a company logo or things like that. But in this mode, we can see that we've uploaded a couple of different images, 2N's own logo and our own logo, ProView Communications, and it's simply cycling through the two. The frequency of the cycling can be changed. I've set it to two seconds. You can have it to one second or even 15, 20, 60 seconds if, if the situation calls. Looking at this touch to start option, we can see that we have two options. We have either contacts or keyboard, also known as keypad. This can be used to either dial an extension if you know who you want to call, and if the Verso is of course set up to allow that. However, I'm going to demonstrate it in access control mode using the code 1234. You'll have noticed there that the numbers were not in their usual positions because this has a scramble function. Say if someone is watching someone enter your building in order to determine the access code themselves, what I've just entered, 1234, looked like 9840. So someone from a distance now thinks the access code is a different one to what it actually is. So it does allow for a bit more security that way. If I were to actually go let's say one, two, three, four, two did happen to be two there, then it doesn't let me in because what I actually entered was 4210. I think I, I wasn't really looking there. I should have been. Um, one, two, three, four, access granted. And obviously this can be set to have um, a range of different entry codes, um, an entry code per person, um, obviously I do prefer the setup where there is just one entry code. It can be also used in a dual authentication setup which I'll come to later. We can see as well the contact option here. Say if I'm a delivery driver for example and I have a parcel for someone called Jasper. Well we see here that there's only one option now I've entered JAS and that brings up Jasper Huff. So the delivery driver can call Jasper, say, I have your parcel. Of course, no one has actually picked up the call. There's no one on the other end. This, this is just a demo, of course. Um, if I, for example, have been rained on and the package only has a few letters left, if I search those three letters, we see four options. And if I can make out anything else on the package, I can maybe determine that it's intended for Elisa and call her and, again, not have anyone pick up. <laughs> um, you can also say if you are a visitor rather than a delivery driver and you know that all the people in block, I'll just do that a bit slowly, <laughs> block B flat two, um, I can ring my friend Mickey and say, hi, it's me, can you let me in? Um, obviously, if Mickey doesn't know who you are or doesn't really like you, he can choose not to. We can also have the, um, the touch display module work in a number of different languages. 2N have uploaded a few default options. I will just take a moment to log into the web interface. The options we can see on here are English, Czech, of course being a Czech manufacturer, German, Italian, French, Spanish and Russian. So if I were in Italy for example, change it to Italian. None of the data or the access codes disappear. Um, in fact none of the flat names disappear, you would have to probably rename those. Um, I don't know how to say block or flat in Italian, unfortunately. We see, however, that the names are the same. 
and again if I try the access codes one two three four lets me in I am autorizzato and that would not let me in I'll change it back to English for the rest of the demonstration you can also upload your own custom language files um, so say if you were in a country that doesn't speak any of these languages um, I have tested it myself with quite a few different scripts as well um, the main ones not demonstrated here being Arabic Greek and Hebrew and it seems to work quite well so any of those languages if we're talking Arabic um, Hebrew or Greek or any other language that uses even the Cyrillic and Latin scripts as well of course so say Serbian for example or Finnish Portuguese um, many options we have a useful help function here as well if um, someone needs help on how to work the unit entering an unlock code menu level up And it's contextual as well. If I now click help, now that I'm in the contacts, touch and move up and down, touch select a contact. You can also use the keyboard to enter your contacts details. No, obviously menu level up, touch the back button. If you've activated the dial function with the keypad, it will also go through how to do that. The keypad can also be descrambled you will notice that every time I make an application in the web interface, the screen will have to reload. As obviously it's been fed a new set of data from the Verso itself. So I've just descrambled the keyboard, so every time now it will just generate as a regular looking keypad, one, two, three, four, five, etc. You can also remove several features from the, um, from the touch display module. If you, for example, don't want a keypad at all, then it will only display the contacts. You won't even have to press the contacts option because it will be the only option that you can access. Um, it should have, ah, uh, we, we have now. It has gone into info panel mode, so you can say touch to start, and then it will just bring up the contacts as, um, as set up in the web interface. You can also have it so it only displays the keypad rather than any contacts. There we are, it'll only display the keypad now. And this is quite good as well if you have, say, a card reader on the Verso for dual authentication as well, as I touched on earlier. Um, I've also tested this with the access control unit, um, which while not a Verso of its own right, it does follow this sort of design scheme. So I had the access unit here, where the Verso main unit is, the touch display module here with the keypad scrambled, and it was working quite well as a dual authentication unit. Touch to start and it will only bring up the keypad. Um, still descrambled from doing that earlier. You can also have neither contacts nor keypad displayed. However, that does leave just this black space at the bottom because as we have no options to go into touch to start, won't do anything, so it has disappeared. Uh, I would recommend having at least one of those functionalities. We can also remove everything from it. But as we can see, there's not much point in doing that. Having removed the images from the info panel, we can not have an info panel as well. We can just have, I have just reactivated the keyboard and re-scrambled it. So 
when a visitor comes to the door, this will be what they are presented with. Just a scrambled keypad, and obviously if they know the access code, they can enter. If not, if you've activated the dial function, you can have them dial to reception, for example. Um, otherwise, then they can't have access to the building, or they could just use the mechanical button here. Thank you very much for watching. I believe I've covered all the features of that. Um, if there are any questions, please um, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much.